Why can you scroll TikTok for three hours without blinking, but you can't focus on a Python tutorial for 15 minutes? Maybe you think you have terrible discipline, but more than likely your brain isn't broken, it's just getting kind of hijacked. And once you understand how, you'll be able to reverse engineer the whole system and actually make studying technical subjects kind of fun? I'm Marina, a senior machine learning scientist at Amazon, and today I'm going to show you the exact system that helped me become someone who has studied AI and machine learning every day alongside a demanding work schedule for the past seven years. When most people think about studying more, they think about two things, managing their time and improving their discipline. These are both important, but I'd actually argue that there's something even more important. Rather than focusing on your schedule, focus on your energy patterns. Think of your attention like a budget. You only have so much you can spend each day. And if you're not intentional about it, it disappears into things that don't give you any return. There's a simple fix here. Start paying attention. Are you a morning person or a night owl? When during the day do you feel sharpest? Notice when you're most focused, when you're sluggish, and when you need breaks. Then design your study schedule around your natural rhythms. For me, I can only tackle really technically challenging material in the first few hours of the morning. I'm straight up dumb after 3 p.m. So I schedule my hardest work then and save easier tasks for the afternoon. Next, pay attention to what activities in your life drain you and what recharge you. A 30 minute workout might actually leave you more energized and ready to tackle that calculus book. But 30 minutes on social media probably will leave you distracted, maybe stressed, and definitely not in a good headspace to push your mental capacities. I really want to emphasize this point. The things that give you easy dopamine hits, like scrolling, gaming, whatever, not only waste your time in the moment, but literally make it harder to enjoy activities that are actually good for you. When your brain gets used to constant stimulation, grinding through a statistics textbook or working through DSA problems feels unbearably boring by comparison. Now, I don't think you need to do a full on dopamine detox or anything like that. But deliberately introducing some boredom into your life can actually be huge for your study skills. For example, every day, spend 15 minutes walking outside just by yourself with no phone, no headphones, no music, no podcast, just you and your thoughts. At first, it will probably feel uncomfortable, but over time, it actually becomes something like a focus cheat code. By resetting your baseline dopamine, you become more able to handle boring study sessions. So we can work on making boring things feel less boring, or we can also try to make them actually be less boring. One of the biggest mistakes I see self-taught engineers make is grinding the same thing the same way all the time. If you're doing leak code for hours every day, or watching tutorial after tutorial on the same framework, your brain starts to check out. There's actually an unintuitive but easy solution here. Just switch things up from time to time. Learn something completely unrelated to your technical goals. I know this sounds counterproductive when you're trying to break into tech, but your brain craves novelty. Novelty triggers dopamine, which keeps your learning system engaged. And honestly, skills from different domains cross-pollinate in surprising and interesting ways. So while I'm consistent with my AI and machine learning work, I've also been taking courses on things like lighting and photography. It's creative, totally different from the technical stuff, and genuinely makes me feel excited to learn again. This is where Skillshare has been perfect. They have incredible AI classes taught by real practitioners on topics like working with ChatGPT, prompt engineering, and AI agents. But they also have creative classes, productivity systems, and entrepreneurship. So when I need a break from my day job, I can learn something completely different that still enriches my skills. I've been working through the Cinematic Lighting Masterclass by Adi Singh to try to level up my content creation. And the classes I've been doing on storytelling have honestly even helped improve my doc writing at work. So you can go deep on your technical goals, but also explore something completely different to keep your brain fresh and prevent burnout. Out. And because you learn at your own pace with thousands of classes available, you can explore whatever keeps your brain engaged while learning directly from real, super talented, and successful instructors. The first 500 people to use my link in the description or scan the QR code will receive a month free trial of Skillshare. Check it out! So beyond what you learn, there's also how you learn it. Say you've been stuck in tutorial hell, or just cranking out DSA problems for months. Even something as simple as switching to a book or building a project can re-energize you. You could even take it one step further and try to teach other people or make studying interactive by joining study groups or Discord servers. The more varied your learning methods, the more engaged your brain will be. And the better you'll actually be able to retain the technical knowledge you're gaining. But even with all these tricks, there are going to be times when you just don't want to do it. And that's where my next tip comes in. If you never think about whether you want to study, you never have to talk yourself out of it. A trick I like is habit stacking. This is where you take something that you already do every day, like making coffee, and attach your study habit directly to it. For me, it could look something like make coffee. 
Open laptop, start reading the book I've left open the night before. I don't need to decide if I feel like studying, I just start. The goal is to make it frictionless because every step between I should study and I'm actually studying is another chance for your brain to talk you out of doing what you know you really should be doing. The key is consistency over perfection. If some days you aren't feeling it, still try to do a little bit of work, like read for five minutes. Never miss two days in a row because then not studying becomes a new habit, not just like a one-time fluke. But what happens if you can't even get started building the study habit in the first place? Or if you get totally off track? This next piece of advice is honestly the number one reason I can point to that explains why I've been able to be consistent for so long. If you're just going through some arduous self-study plan because you feel some kind of pressure or guilt, eventually you'll burn out. Tech moves too fast and the learning curve is too steep for that to be sustainable. There needs to be something deeper. You need to be clear on why you're actually doing all of this in the first place. I use a tool called the five whys to help make this deeper motivation clear. It's really simple. You just ask yourself why five times to get to the real reason you want to do something. For me, it goes something like this. Why do I want to study consistently? To improve my technical skills. Why do I want to do that? To advance in my career. Why? To be financially stable. Why? Because I want to take care of my friends and family. Why? Because I love them. Now I'm not just grinding leak code out of guilt or fear. I'm studying because it connects to something that actually matters to me. That's what keeps me going. And here's the final mindset shift. If you're studying now to get into tech and thinking that one day this will all be over and you'll finally land your dream job and be able to stop, I have bad news for you. It's never going to happen. If you work in tech, you're never going to reach a point where you can just coast. New techniques take over, the field evolves, and you need to evolve with it. But instead of that feeling stressful, it can actually be freeing. There's no finish line to stress about. Learning isn't a phase you get through before you can finally relax. It's part of your identity. You're someone who's curious and wants to grow throughout your life. You're a lifelong learner in a field that rewards exactly that. Once you accept that, the pressure drops. You can just focus on doing a little bit every day. And over time, that compounds into real technical skills. The process becomes the goal, not some distant outcome like landing a fang job or becoming a senior engineer. Those things happen as a result of the process. So here's the full system for making technical studying addictive. First, manage your energy. Understand your patterns and prioritize physical and mental health for peak cognitive performance. Reset your dopamine baseline. Practice boredom and keep distractions far away so technical work feels rewarding. Make studying varied and novel. Switch it up with something completely different. Make it automatic. Habit stack, remove friction, and track your wins. And connect to your deeper why. This is what sustains you through the hard parts of self-studying. Through a system like this, self-studying technical subjects stops being something you force yourself to do. It becomes something your brain actually wants to do. Now, if you're not sure what to study, check out my Python roadmap video that's up next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.